2003 Nissan 350Z, a car most famously known for losing to an RB swap Mustang in a toge drift battle in the mountains of Japan. But it also happens to be a well-known and respected for its fantastic handling, smooth power delivery and excellent weight distribution, not to mention being powered by the very loved VQ motor, which pumped out a respective 287 horsepower, which I honestly didn't expect that, but there we go. On first glance, you probably think that this is a relatively clean, low mileage set, and you'd be right in thinking so. Even on close inspection, the bodywork is a really impressive nick and certainly doesn't make you think that the car has done over 230,000 kilometres. But here we are, and this example has done exactly that. So, what's actually wrong with it and why is it so cheap? It isn't until you look under the carbon silver bodywork where the problems start to reveal themselves. A strong smell of burning oil paired with a check engine light illuminating the dash are the only signs of all the problems to come. And there are a few. When picking up the car we were aware of a few of the faults. The largest being a failing knock sensor, along with leaking rocker cover gaskets, a failing speedometer, leaky boot struts and a key fob that wasn't quite operational. When removing the necessary parts for the rocker cover repair, uh, I started to battle with a particularly stubborn coil pack, which later was found that the entirety of the spark plug hole was filled with liquid sealant, probably from a previous repair. It was at this point that we all started to wonder if perhaps this car was really cheap for a reason, and sure enough, after reassembly, the knock sensor, the gaskets were all replaced, car fired up and started misfiring really badly, and another check engine light came up. So off we went, we replaced every single coil pack, every single spark plug, put it all back together, fired the car up, ran mint, fantastic, but that air light wouldn't go away and we cleared it about three or four times, still came back. So this brings us to now where the car is mostly repaired. We didn't go too overboard because although it was a cheap purchase price, the high Ks make it an incredibly difficult car to sell and we were getting a little worried about cutting too close to that break even point. Also, my feet are holding the door open because it shuts itself because of the wind. So here we are, about three months worth of work in and we finally got a more or less complete car ready to go. So I'm sure you're all asking yourself, what is it like to drive? Honestly, it's fine. <laughs> I haven't really got much to say. It, it drives totally fine. Um, obviously the check engine light is still present, so there's that. I have noticed from driving it that there is occasionally a very slight um, rotational kind of whirring sound in the rear. I suspect it's either brakes or maybe a wheel bearing that's on its way out. Um, but other than that, it, it feels fantastic. It doesn't feel like a car that's done over 200,000 k's. It, it's solidly built, like even a car of this age in this case, there's hardly any squeaks and rattles. There is a slight creak in the back, but I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if it's actually just all the stuff that I've got in the, in the boot, because I've got all of the boxes and trim pieces and things just lying there loosely, so it might be just knocking up against something. But yeah, it's, it's fine. It's very well put together. It's it's a really fantastic, it's a comfortable place to be on the inside. I've never really been a fan of the sort of design scheme that Nissan chose with this car in terms of interior, but yeah, it's, it's, it's actually really spacious, it's cozy. When the windows are up, it's very quiet. Um, like, I, I can genuinely understand why people like these cars, and, and I could see this as being a really nice daily driver, commuter, you know, it's comfortable, the automatic is super easy, it's got a decent amount of grunt, it's just a really nice car. In terms of faults, um, I did briefly just brush up on that now, but the check engine light is still present. There's that rotational whirring in the back, but it's, I mean, I can't hear it right now. It only seems to be when I'm on particularly smooth roads doing like 50k. Um, and what else fault-wise? I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, the door. The door obviously doesn't like to stay open and I discovered that yesterday when I was trying to film and the wind, I had the camera lens right up against the door and the wind caught the door and I just saw it start to slam and I had to wedge my foot in the way which wasn't the uh, most comfortable experience but you know, that's half the fun isn't it about these cheap old cars. I still can't get over the fact that a 350Z is now a cheap car. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are in the same boat, you know, being a kid growing up with sort of Need for Speed games and Fast and Furious and stuff, where the Z was, was something new, it was amazing, it was this awesome car, and it still is a great, great little car, but yeah, I just can't get over the fact that they're now old. <laughs> but yeah, uh, fault-wise, yeah, those are really it. it as I said, driving-wise, you don't really notice any of, any of the issues particularly badly. Um, 
I think it will be a good fun little project for whoever decides to buy the car. Um, as this recording currently sits, I've got two people coming up to Auckland to view the vehicle. Um, we will discuss the, the attention that this car has brought because it's been, it's been quite interesting. So that brings us to the next episode, which will be the sit down. Um, it will be the chin wag with me, Hayden and John. I'll go more into depth, well we'll all go more into depth about the car and as I said all the highlights and lowlights and that kind of stuff. One, one note I want to make with that is I mentioned earlier that I was going to discuss finances and, and you know, the money in and the money out. I realised that it might not be that kind of fluid because obviously when we're doing the video I'm wanting to do the video with the car still with us. So what I'm thinking of doing is we'll go through all the stuff we'll start to talk about the finances but when we get to that kind of point I'll probably have a sort of I'll probably have a pause you know have a pause at some point where I'll interject and be like hey look this is actually what we sold the car for um, and this is how much we made etc but yeah that was just a quick little note that I realized wasn't quite going to work as I as I planned it to but that's fine that's you know that's half the fun that's the next episode it'll probably come in in the next yeah probably in the next few days to be honest also another quick note is obviously an apology for the format of this clip I realized that this is really not following what I had initially planned I've said this to you guys all before but I just want to reiterate that these these three episodes because it's going to be three episodes with the 350 it is not how they're going to be going in the future we're actually getting it delivered today we've already got another car for our next sort of series but it again isn't going to follow um, rule set purely because this car we will not be fixing it is it is written off by all means it's it's not repairable so that will be more a video on you know the full strip down of a car and you probably won't get updates on that one unless notable things sell or we finally sold every last piece and we can actually discuss the numbers and profits for that but aside from this and that coming car it will be formatted as I'd mentioned in, in my previous clip it's just yeah I didn't have the kit I wasn't prepared <laughs> but we are now so apologies for that forewarning in advance this is the kind of review-esque kind of video and then the next one will be the sit down so well, if you made it this far into the video, then hopefully it means you're still interested. I've still managed to wrap you in. <laughs> Don't know how, but it worked. Um, again, a massive thank you for continuing to watch and, and, and be invested in this, what will hopefully be really exciting series. So yeah, again, thank you guys so, so much. And I'll see you in the next video, which will be the sit down and chin work with the three of us. See ya.